Good morning. I'm Greg Burks, and on behalf of the people of South Aiken Presbyterian, I welcome you here to this morning worship service on Palm Sunday. Uh, we are very blessed by your presence and glad that you are here today. If you need assistance or have any questions, please feel free to ask, ask, ask me, or you may see other people wearing name tags. That means we've been here a couple of times. Uh, our pastor and any of the ushers. Also, uh, we have a few announcements I want to uh, point out. They're in the bulletin, but a couple. Uh, one is VBS helpers. As you know, we ha we're having vacation Bible school. We are looking for helpers. Uh, Michelle wanted me to let you know that we have filled the main positions of the kind of the class leaders, and now we're looking for those folks to be the helpers for those classes. So from what I've heard, it's a lot of fun. If you can do that, please see Michelle Lorio or send a note to the church office. Also, there is a note, uh, a piece in the bulletin about reimagining Sunday school. We're looking at kind of making some uh, improvements to make it a little more intergenerational, so please look at that. We are going to have a planning meeting. Uh, the information's in the bulletin, so if you're interested in that, uh, please look at that, and, and we'd love to have you at the planning meeting. Are there any other announcements that anybody would have? If not, finally, I would ask you to sign the attendance pad. They're found near the center aisle uh, in your pew, and that way we may know that you are here and uh, celebrate that you're here with us. If there's nothing else, let us worship God.
Please remain standing and join me in our call to worship. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Say, God's steadfast love endures forever. Open to us the gates of righteousness, that we may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. We thank you that you have answered us and have become our salvation. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. be seated. Please join me as we confess our sins by making the prayer of confession our own. Please join me. Gracious God, we confess, we celebrate Jesus going into Jerusalem, but we shy away from the suffering he will be facing. We confess that faith is great when we are on the mountaintop, yet in the valley our faith falls. Our doubt increases and our face falls down. Forgive us, O oh God, for only acknowledging our faith in the good times and not in the suffering. Strengthen our faith when journey close to death. Train us through your Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible tells us that nothing can separate us from the love of God. We are forgiven. 
As you see and hear the water being poured into the font, let us remember Christ's forgiveness for all of our sins and urges us to live according to the Holy Spirit leading. Holy Spirit's leading. Peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Please share Christ's peace with one another. Good morning. Good morning. I am so excited. <laughs> These are your excited faces. I am so excited because today is Palm Sunday. My face is more excited than theirs is, isn't it? Maybe it's because you don't know how special today is yet. So today is Palm Sunday, and it's the start of Holy Week. It's the most special and important week in the entire year. This, my friends, is the Super Bowl of Sundays. <laughs> Truly. See, there we go. We're getting a little better. This morning, I want to take you back in time with me to the very first Palm Sunday. It was a celebration of Jesus coming into Jerusalem. It was a day that marked the beginning of an incredible week. In one week, we see Jesus celebrated, arrested, tried, condemned, and crucified. But just as this week started with a celebration, next week starts with an even bigger celebration. On the first Palm Sunday, a big crowd of people were in Jerusalem celebrating Passover. And remember, Passover was the holiday that celebrated the time that God saved the Jewish people from slavery in Egypt. The crowd heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem and celebrating Passover too, and they were really excited. Jesus was walking with his disciples towards Jerusalem. Just as they came near the city, Jesus told two of his disciples to go on ahead into the town and to untie a young donkey that had never been ridden. Untie the donkey and bring him to me. If anyone asks what you were doing, which I would expect that they would, right? Tell them the Lord needs it, but he will send it back to you soon. The disciples did what they were told to do, and it happened just as the way Jesus had told them. They found the young donkey, untied it, and started to lead it away. But some men were standing by, nearby, and they asked the disciples, What are you doing? They told them what Jesus had said, and the man let them take the donkey. The disciples brought the young donkey to Jesus, and then put their coats on him to make a soft place for Jesus to sit. 
as they made their way into the city of Jerusalem, people tore off palm branches. They waved them. And in those days, palm branches were a sign of victory and triumph. So they were celebrating. Why palm branches? Why palm branches? Be- because it was the sign back then. It was a sign of a celebration. It was like if we were going to be excited for triumph, right? We were cheering. No, but why not different branches? Why palm branches? That's what they had there, right? We didn't have oak trees there, so we just made do with what, the, what we had. So a huge crowd of people with palm branches were waving them in the air and cheering to the Messiah. People took off their cloaks and spread it out on the road ahead of him. People were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Others followed behind, and they were also shouting. It was a wonderful, noisy celebration. They were excited. Don't you worry, parents. Every one of your kids is going to go home with one of these. I already have one of those. I already have one of those. You're welcome. <laughs> Good. It was a wonderful, noisy, joyous celebration. And just as those people celebrated 2,000 years ago, we have come here today to celebrate Jesus. And I am so excited to celebrate with you today. Will you say a prayer with me? Dear Jesus, Jesus, we we celebrate you today. Just like the people in Jerusalem, on that first Palm Sunday. On that first Palm Sunday. Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed is, he Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. go to God in prayer of, for illumination, allowing the Holy Spirit to open our hearts and our minds for the scripture as well as the preaching. Please pray with me. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the Spirit allowing us to be able to worship you today. 
allowing us to give us the message that you want for us personally and collectively to live out in faith. O oh God of the word, bring your message, clear any hindrance to your message so that we can live as faithful followers of Christ. In Christ's name we pray, amen. A little background on the Old Testament lesson, which is Isaiah 50, 4 through 9. The section of Isaiah is another version of what is called the suffering servant. It is a third of four of these suffering servant songs or poems. Songs or poems that speak of a servant of God who suffers at the hands of the powerful. We will hear God's sustaining presence and characteristics of willingness to suffer and the depth to the trusting of God who will clear the servant of any blame of wrongdoing. The torturers will wear out. So listen for the word of the Lord from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a trained tongue that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheek to those who would pull out my beard. I did not hide my face from insults and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand in court together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. All of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. And Matthew 21, 1 through 11 is our gospel lesson. Again, going with our children's moment, this is Palm Sunday, and this is a section where it talks about Jesus entering Jerusalem. So listen to Matthew's version of Palm Sunday. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them. And he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet. Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road and Others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he had entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? Crowds were saying, 
This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Hear what the Spirit of God says to the church. Some worshipers came to the entrance of the church, being handed a palm branch which is waved in the Gospel of John and not in Matthew. Jesus obtained both mother donkey and colt so that that humble king may enter Jerusalem with a questioning crowd of, who is this? The crowd responds, the prophet Jesus. The same crowd shouting and chanting, Hosanna, memorializing the event of the suffering servant by looking at the palm branch given at the door and reminding ourselves that we serve a servant king. A servant king whose mission is to assist others to know Almighty God in a new way and inaugurate a new kingdom on earth through the community of faith, the church. We remember the waving palms as a child when we waved the palms high, singing Hosanna loud, Hosanna, not knowing that the servant king would be whipped, flogged, and spat upon. Maybe we still ask the question with the crowd, who is this Jesus? A man and savior of a sinner, who we may call prophet, yet we don't trust Jesus enough to call him Lord of all areas of our life. Just certain parts that we allow Jesus to touch. We notice the crowds that shout on entry of Jesus' humble donkeys even most humble, a colt, as cloaks and coats are thrown down to honor the king in the middle as we journey with him on the sidelines. We watch as our emotions raise to a low murmur as the crowd in scripture shouts, Hosanna to the son of David, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven are the same crowd turns, betrays by shouting, crucify him, crucify him. The same crowd, same crowd that can't tolerate those who journey with the margin, not marginalized people. Those who are poor, the people in the crowd didn't want to see their Lord and Savior be different from them. And they say, crucify him, crucify him later. The obedient disciples obtained the transportation of humility instead of power. Meekness instead of authority. Servanthood instead of royalty. They have all the notes and none of the music. They have the theology straight. He is a prophet. Jesus is a prophet too. But they will still end up rejecting Jesus and calling for his death. Matthew is striking a familiar note. Knowing the truth is not the same thing as doing the truth. One social psychologist said of a university student is also true of the kingdom. It is possible to make an A plus in the course on ethics and still flunk life. Some of us want to wave the palms and shout Hosanna, yet refuse to serve. Some of us want others to lead without giving our resources, 
Some of us want to go through the motions living a part-time Christianity without stretching ourselves because we think we still think our faith is still one which is the only lived out in our life. We have created with the fences we built. We want the celebration without the suffering. The willingness of the king in the middle and the suffering servant show, shows the way in the journey to the cross, though, that we all must take. The cross to death it starts off as a celebratory but ends in suffering. Where is your faith then? Communing with those faithful to the community, we will do this Thursday. In the reenactment of the upper room, sitting at the cross and having a small meal and remembering our Jesus. Sharing in the meal with Jesus, the Messiah, we proclaim. The Lord, the Savior of our existence that paves the way so we can reconnect with God the Father. And standing up so that others may know Christ more. A summary of Holy Week. This week, I opened my iPhone, swiped right to get my Great Clips app. Knowing I needed a little trim and shaping up of my top coat, I signed in on the app and drove and was called to seat to lower the ears, you might say. I asked for the hairdresser's name as we become familiar. She was a new person to me. I said, I have, been, I have a busy week this coming week. I must look a little better. It's called Holy Week, I shared. She said, I'm holy most of the time. <laughs> if there was a narrator for the story I was in, they would say, the hairdresser thought to herself, what is Holy Week? Holy, holy means being divine, godlike, supernatural even. I have been holy sometimes in my life, she thought to herself. Of course, she asked, and sometimes the dreaded question, the conversation killer, I say, the past experiences of church flood her mind, a bad advice with the one with the robe, or called pastor, gave them that burned the bridge to God, that spirituality abuse situation. Or did not give grace when they made mistake and they took it personal. A little conversation, the question came, what do you do? I said, I'm a pastor of South Aiken Presbyterian Church across from Odell Weeks Park. Do you know the area? She said, yes. The holy conversation continued. I asked, what do you think holy means? Most of the time, people think of holy as rule followers, divine even. She affirmed. I explained, really, holy means separate, separated from the crowd. She said, I like that meaning. Holy Week became sacred at a hair cutter franchise. When getting my ears lowered. No waving palm. Maybe a questioning crowd. But definitely the king and the prophet was in the middle. May we follow Jesus, praising God, communing with family, enduring suffering and death in faith, and experience the resurrection in us next week and every day. Glory be to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us all stand and sing. comes a time in our service where we pray a prayer of intercession where you join your spirit with mine as we open our hearts and our minds to others. Let us go to God and pray a prayer of intercession together through the spirit. Please pray with me. Gracious God, we humbly come with many followers of Christ around the world interceding for the church, the world, the nation, and the community, and our loved ones. In this time of great change in culture and church, may we still follow you, announcing your lordship to all people. May we follow you even through the suffering to the cross this week and each week. May our minds not turn back when we are called to court. May we not refuse to carry our own cross. May we not witness to the, to the good news found in your Holy Week scriptures, communing with friends at the Last Supper and experience the valley of death and know the hope found experienced in the resurrection on Easter morning. With the Holy Week, the church seems to still struggle with calling of women to pastoral leadership and shepherding. Versus how some Christians interpret scripture. Help us, O oh God, affirm people you call to lead your church. And to give discernment in the Holy Spirit in the church across the globe. We offer your world in prayer. We come and we pray that you end the war between Ukraine and Russia. Thwart any attempts at continuation of killing and foster in the people of both sides. Peace and ceasefire. Be with the children that have recently been commanded to evacuate their homes. Journey with all the refugees as they seek rest and safety. Stop violence between Palestinians and the Israeli army. Cultural wars abound and religious freedom denied to Iranian women who were arrested for not wearing their traditional head covering. We pray for our nation as over 100 mass shootings continue to be unleashed in our nation. Even though most go unreported, help us put an end to the killing of children in our schools. 
May we love our children so much that we prevent killings. Raise emotionally healthy children and treat mental illness. With legalistic, religious, non-grace-based religions operating in the nation, help those who feel judged, feel outcast, feel criticized and unloved. We ask you for more intervention through immigration, which continues to be a sore spot politically. Give peace to the U.S.-Mexico border and prevent senseless killings. We pray for our communities around our nation and the schools where teachers are trained against the backdrop of a combat zone. Products manufactured to keep teachers and children safe in the classroom are coming out. We lament that the place where learning occurs has become a war zone, O oh God. Great God, give us the wisdom of administration and counsel to protect all children, whether victims of shooting or the one who desires to harm others. We also offer those people in power through legal means, manipulate the law for their own benefit. Bring justice, O oh God. Also bring new ways to care for all diseased of the brain. Respite for caregivers, whether it be a spouse or another family member or the patient even. We pray for our loved ones. We pray for our loved ones on the recent death of their mother, Jackie and Kelly. We pray for Song Yi who was at her daughter's funeral. We pray for Sandy and Jerry. We give you thanks for a successful surgery for Clay. We pray you continue to bless Kristen in her recovery, and we give you thanks for the transition to rehabilitation. We give you thanks for Jim and his recovery and rehabilitation from his open heart surgery. God, we pray for the Shaw and the A.B. family, Baker, Kelly, Scott's family, Joyce and Jeff, in their season of grief. Great God, we give you thanks for those who are recovering from surgery like Eddie, Bill, Bob, Peg, and Jack. We pray for health concerns that Mary Ann, Lou, Court, Carrie, Roger, Mary Louise, Leslie, Gail, Phil, Jane, Barbara, and Anita and Bob are going through. We ask for your healing and comfort for Linda and Richard. Give them good times while they have time. Doug, Ray, Lynn, Dot, Ethel, Steve and Linda, Bob, Georgia, Glady, Ron, Lois, and Peg. We lift up all folks that can't physically come and are homebound this day. Be with them in a special way. Give them endurance and perseverance. We pray for all of those who we cannot mention verbally this morning but in our hearts, in silence. O oh God, continue to lead us into prayer of intercession by your Holy Spirit. Help overcome temptation when we lack trust and faith in prayer. Lead us to those who need your light. In Christ's name we pray, amen. There's a time where you offer yourself Maybe the message today got you thinking about your own existence in life that you took in the season of Lent, those 40 days, and it's culminated today. I ask you to offer yourself to God and allow that encounter with the Holy Spirit speak to your heart and your mind so that you can examine your life 
as we go through this Holy Week. And as you examine, I ask you to continue to consider how God has given you tons of grace and generosity to you, given you resources in the community that you have. And I ask you to be as generous as you can be for this mission at South Aiken. Ushers, please come. Please pray with me. Gracious God, we give you thanks that you continue to bring generous gifts to this mission of South Aiken. God, we give you thanks for all the time and the talents that it takes to bring this worship to be today. We give you thanks for how you continue to journey with the Holy Spirit into suffering, into death, and into resurrection. Great God, continue to teach us what you want us to know. Give us the endurance and the perseverance that we need and give us the gratitude that we need every day. Great God, we give you thanks for the prayer that you taught your disciples long ago, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
Please be seated. to ask uh, Anita Sell to come forward as our clerk of session. On behalf of the session, I present Diane Davies and Deanna Davies, who have been received into membership of this congregation by transfer from First Presbyterian Church of Aiken. Thank you, Anita. It's great to have you. I just got to ask you a few questions. Uh, trusting the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin, renounce evil and its power in the world? If you, if you do, say, I do. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and his love? If you do, say, I do. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? If you will, say, I will with God's help. Amen. Let us all stand. With the whole church, let us affirm our faith in the Apostles' Creed, answering the question, Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Please join my spirit, your spirit with mine as we pray a prayer. Holy God, who leads us by the Holy Spirit to move communities, we praise you for calling us to be your servant people and for gathering us into the body of Christ. We thank you for choosing to add to our number sisters in faith. We thank you for their gifts to be seen in service and loving care to those in community outside the church as well as inside it. Lead us all to surrender by faith more to you. Together, may we live in your spirit and so love one another that we may have the mind of Christ our Lord to whom we give honor and glory forever. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand and sing our final hymn.
So from this sanctuary, I send you out into the world. Maybe waving palms. Maybe sharing the good news. Maybe acknowledging the king in the middle in your life. With all of that, may you go with the good news of Jesus Christ. Now may the mercy and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be upon you now and forever. Amen.